Below our mission description, we want to show the pictures, names, and roles of each crew member for that mission. And this means matching up data that came from two different JSON files. Now, if you remember, we have astronauts.json and missions.json here, and it's designed to eliminate duplication in our data because we have on one side Grissom, White, Chaffee, and uh, all different names here, all the way down to you know, the very end, whoever that last person was. Um, Schmidt, here we are. The IDs. And in the missions, we have just the IDs. Grissom, White, Chaffee, and similar, all the way down somewhere to presumably Schmidt will be in here somewhere. There he is, here. And that's intentional because it means we haven't got to keep on copying all of Neil Armstrong's data or all of Evans' data or Schmidt's data, whoever it is, into the missions as we go because many people took two flights or even three flights or more perhaps in some cases. And so rather than duplicating things, we have on one side all our astronaut data and the other side all the mission data. We ought to try and resolve this. We ought to try and resolve, you know, we're reading uh, Armstrong here, Apollo 11, We've got to figure out what that means. We're going to match that against Armstrong in here somewhere. I'm not quite sure where uh, Neil would be, somewhere around here, I guess. Collins, Conrad, Armstrong. We're going to match him to this Neil A. Armstrong right there. So that's what we have to do. Match missions to astronauts and ultimately astronauts to missions as well. Because Armstrong here does not mention anywhere that he was on Apollo 11. It doesn't say that. It only describes Neil himself and over here, only the mission itself. So what I'll try and do is make our mission view accept the mission that got tapped. This one here needs that, along with our full astronauts dictionary. And then have it figure out dynamically which astronauts actually took part in the launch. We'll do this with a new Nestor struct called crew member. And this thing, has a role, what role this person played, commander or who knows what, senior pilot, along with the astronaut who actually had that role. So at this point, we're inside the mission, we know which mission they're on, we'll know which astronaut it was and the role they played. Now for the tricky part, we need to add a property to mission view that stores an array of these crew members. And these are the fully resolved role slash astronaut pairings. At first, that's easy. Let crew be an array of crew member. But how do we set that property? Think about it. If we make this view be handed its mission and all possible astronauts, we can loop over the mission crew, which will say to us, if you look in here, it'll say Armstrong Collins Aldrin was a commander, command module pilot, and lunar module pilot. It'll tell you who they were. We can then look them up in our dictionary, in astronauts.json. We have the key Armstrong. We can find out who that actually was in the dictionary. And then combine those together. Say, oh, we've got the astronaut and their role, bang, that's a crew member instance, put it into our array. If we can't find Armstrong, Collins, Schmidt, whoever, that's a real problem again. It means our JSON is bad. We've got someone in a role in Apollo 17 or something saying, yep, the commander's here, they were so-and-so, and that person's missing from our data. Again, that should never happen. It means you've added some JSON to your project. To hard code it into the actual finished app bundle, that's wrong. You've made a fundamental mistake. It's not the kind of thing you want to try and handle errors for at runtime, it should never be allowed in the first place. So again, this is a great example of where to use fatal error. If you cannot find the astronaut given their ID, exit immediately, complain loudly, so you can see immediately when you're building stuff, whoops, I've made a mistake in my JSON. Let's put all this into code using a custom initializer for our mission view struct. Like I said, this is gonna accept the mission it represents, along with all the astronauts. And its job is to go through the mission crew and figure out the array of resolved crew members to find the astronauts and put them in. So we'll say, init with a mission mission and astronauts being a dictionary with string as keys and astronaut as value. 
The mission part easy enough. We just copy across self.mission equals mission. The crew, that takes more thinking. So we'll say our crew is equal to the missions crew dot map transformed somehow. Receive one member coming in. Again, this would be the string Collins, Armstrong, Aldrin, or whoever. And our job is to look up that person's name. Who was this person in our astronaut's dictionary? So if we can find that, if let astronaut equals astronauts member.name. So we found Armstrong in our astronauts dictionary. Brilliant. We'll send back a new crew member instance. The role being our role from the mission. So lunar module pilot, for example, and the matched astronaut. If we could not find in our dictionary, our JSON data says, yep, uh, Hudson was a well-known Apollo 17 pilot. Um, look for him and he's not in the actual astronaut's dictionary. Whoops, we made a fundamental mistake. Go ahead and call fatal error, missing member.name. We could not find Hudson in the astronaut's dictionary. Wasted. Anyway, with that code being in place, once again, our preview struct will complain. We can't create a mission view without astronauts being passed in. So we've got to decode an astronaut's dictionary as well to keep our previews working. So we'll say static let astronauts be a string astronaut dictionary equal to bundle.main dot decode astronauts dot json and then pass that in down here boom so now we have all our astronaut data we can show this directly below our description using a horizontal scroll view so the main scroll view goes vertical this one will be horizontal we're going to add a little bit of extra styling here to make it look a bit nicer a little capsule clip shape, a little overlay for a border and similar, but it'll look quite nice, I think. Let's find out. So we have our inner vStack, our image and our, sorry, our outer vStacks here. Here's our inner vStack here. After the inner vStack, so after the vStack alignment leading, we're going to add a scroll view going horizontally. And I'm going to hide the indicators. Our set shows indicators to be false. So we won't get a scroll bar there. It just looks a bit nicer. This is a horizontally scrolling thing. So I'll place my views in a H stack. We'll then loop over the crew with the ID being role, because the role is unique for our crew members. Pass one crew member in, like that. And for each one of these crew members, we'll have a navigation link showing the details. For now though, we'll just do text of astronaut details. We'll come back to that one later. And a label for this will be the thing we want to show for the astronaut, what we want to show on the screen. And I'll say there is a H stack with an image of crew member dot astronaut dot ID. Because Collins, Armstrong, Aldrin and similar are the same names we've used inside our asset catalog. So here's Aldrin, here's Anders, here's Borman and Bean and Armstrong and similar. They're there, right there, using their ID to find them. So we can refer to that as their ID here. You can see it just peeping through the bottom here, by the way, there is uh, someone, I'm not quite sure who, sorry. Grissom maybe, I don't know. Anyway, um, there is the astronaut uh, appearing. I'm gonna say it's resizable, so we can scale it down because I want a specific frame, width 104, height 72. That matches the proportions, the ratio of the original. So we haven't got to add scale to fit anymore because that is the correct ratio for our astronaut image size. I'll clip these things using a clip shape of capsule. So you get a nice sort of rounded effect to it. And then I'm gonna overlay these. There we go, you can see them down here. I'll overlay these things by saying I want another capsule over them. And this will have a stroke border in white with line width one. Now stroke border strokes the edges in white, as you can see here in our little preview. I get out of the way so you can see it. There we go, little white border. 
it's like stroke, but stroke border draws a stroke entirely inside the thing it's stroking. Whereas stroke by itself will draw half inside, half outside. This will make sure our layout doesn't accidentally clip the border being drawn. It'll all be inside, so it looks correct here. So that is our uh, astronaut pictures here. After the astronaut picture, still inside the H stack, I'll say there's a V stack with alignment of leading. And this is where we're gonna place the information about our astronauts. So we'll say there's a text saying uh, crew member, member dot astronaut. Oh wait, that's our member, sorry. Member dot astronaut. No, it's crew member, isn't it? It's crew member dot astronaut dot name. There we go. Xcode just not being helpful here for some reason. Yeah, it is correct. Just Xcode not completing for me. Cool. Thank you very much. Um, and I'll say this thing needs to have a uh, foreground color of white and a font of headline. It's a bit more bold, so it stands out nice and clear. There we go. And then after that, I'll say there is a text of crew member dot roll in foreground color. And let's try secondary, see how that looks. Secondary. Yeah, that looks fine. Uh, to add a little bit of spacing here between each of our uh, pilots, I'm gonna say our H stacks have some horizontal padding like that, just so they stay away from the edges a little bit and away from each other like that. So you can sort of get a little hint, there's more to come, there's more to swipe through, um, but it doesn't add too much. Now, remember, the way you add padding here matters, and the way you add your stacks of stuff all matters. You wanna get it in exactly the right order. And if you look, I've just added this scroll view here, the new scroll view, outside this VStack, not inside. That's intentional because scroll views work best when they go edge to edge. So you can see they're hanging off the edge on the right here and we scroll, it'll go all the way to the edge and then scroll off the screen. If we had put this scroll view inside this VStack, it would have padding horizontally. It'd be clipped before it reached the edge of the screen. It would look a bit strange it's better to not have that. Yes, make them start indented, but let them scroll fully off the screen. That's the way iOS looks and works. It's much, much better, trust me. We're gonna make this nav link do something more useful shortly. But first, we've got to modify the original nav link in content view. So actually showing our new mission data. Right now it just pushes the detail view, right? <laughs> we wanna say, push to a mission view with mission being our mission and astronauts being our astronauts. And now go ahead and run the code in your simulator because it's actually starting to become useful. This is a real app almost now. So I'll press Apollo 1 here and it comes with the highlights and a crew down here and swipe through. You can see it scrolls all the way to the edge of the screen nicely like you'd expect. It makes full use of the screen space, but it starts neatly indented, it doesn't go edge to edge at the very beginning. Now, before we move on, I would like you to think about spending a few minutes customizing the way your astronauts are shown. Now I've used a sort of capsule clip shape and a little stroke around it and so forth. Try something else, try circles, try rectangles, try a way of determining uh, who the commander was in any mission, different fonts, different images, different colors. It's down to you. In my project, I think it'd be useful to add a bit more visual distinction between the parts of this view. So you can see there's the badge, then a gap, then the highlights, then a gap, then a crew. So it's just clearly uh, split up on the screen. That's what I'm going to do. I'll do it now. But it's a chance for you to do your own thing. So go ahead and try what you want to do if you want to, or try mine. So I'm gonna split up the view slightly more. And SwiftUI actually has a special view for splitting up your layouts. It's called Divider. And it's not useless, but it's only fractionally not useless. It's, it's not great. Uh, so here is my mission highlights. And I'll zoom into 100% temporarily so you can kind of see actually 125%. I place a divider between highlights and this patch. I'll place one right here. 
and uh, it'll reload my little layout, and that's it there. That very, very, very thin, very, very, very almost invisible uh, line is SwiftUI's divider. It's not great, uh, and it's not customizable. You can't really change it very easily, and so uh, I prefer to draw my own. You know, a rectangle with a custom height, custom color, custom padding just works better, I think, than using SwiftUI's built-in divider. And so I replace divider with this as a rectangle with a frame height of two and a foreground color of uh, dot light background. Light background. And then padding of vertical. That, I think, looks better when it snaps in. There we go. So it's, it's slightly clearer on the screen, uh, stands out slightly more in our uh, layout. That I think would work best inside the V stack because you can see it goes edge to edge right now. I think I'd rather like that to match this neat little line alignment down here. And so we can move that one into the V stack. So you can get a taste of when actually this should go edge to edge, this one, not so much. I'll place another one of these things, literally a copy and paste job, another one of these things after the mission description. So we get a divider at the top and a divider at the bottom. Down here, just about make it out maybe on my screen. I press Command R so you can see it more clearly perhaps. Uh, just to divide things up on the screen really nicely. So here's our Apollo 1 again. And then our divider just here. It's, it's dim, but trust me, a lot brighter than the original divider. Another one and then our uh, astronauts below. So there we go. That's our dividers. I think it looks a bit better already. To finish up, I'm going to just add another title before the crew, saying crew. Um, and even though this relates to the scroll view, and you know it belongs to the scroll view in terms of what it's talking about, it's crew, followed by our scroll view of crew, it needs to have the same padding as our text. It needs to have this beautiful hard left line down the left here. And so I'm actually going to place it inside the V-Stack. Even though it's not like logically next to our scroll view, visually it'll become next to our scroll view and look good. And this, our style the same as our mission highlights. I'll copy that, paste it into our V-Stack here, and then just say, oops, say, text of crew. And let's give that a try. So hopefully now we should see our divided stuff plus the text crew, let's find out. Mission highlights, then crew, and then that. So it's all neatly left aligned. Now you don't have to put it here, right? You could move outside the V stack if you wanted to, like this, and then apply padding by hand, padding the horizontal. Of course you could, that's also allowable. You get the same result. However, if you choose to do that, remember to apply the same padding here and here. If you had 10 for the first one and 20 for the second one, you'd get a jagged line, it wouldn't look so good. And so by putting it inside the V stack, I'm getting the same padding every time, even if in the future, I decide to change the padding. It'll automatically apply to the crew as well. So I prefer to have it in there, keep everything neatly aligned.